Are we up? Hello and welcome to The Social Recruiting Show. I'm Katrina Collier. I'm a social recruiting trainer and speaker. I'm, of course, joined by my gorgeous co-host, Audra Knight, who is an employer branding genius, blab cat owning, cast not cast wearing. No, we're not talking about that, are we? Purple loving bass player. Did I cover everything? I hope so. Oh, don't know. Today, we are super excited to be talking about employee referrals, which might seem strange on the social recruiting show, but to me, it makes complete sense. So we've got Michael ba Barkman, not Bachman, Barkman, from, who is the co-founder of Preferred Hire joining us. So welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Fantastic. Now, Michael, can you take us through a bit about your career and how you got to Preferred Hire and, and in the referral space? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking. So um, basically my background, I've had um, about 20 years of experience in the industry. I worked uh, uh, specifically for staffing firms and then transitioned over to what I'll call like the job board space. And in one of my last roles, I actually worked for a company that um, helps other companies determine true uh, job board ROI, right? So things like cost per apply, things like uh, cost for qualified apply, and ultimately uh, cost per hire. And um, it was kind of like, while I was having those conversations, it was kind of the big elephant in the room, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, the topic of referrals, right? So I was always helping companies determine, hey, what's your number two external source of hire or best performing source of hire? It was always referrals, that was number one. And it's, you know, no surprise to anybody on this call. Um, however, if you look across the landscape, very few employees actually participate in the referral process, right? We have, um, there's a lot of uh, you know, employees aren't engaged. And if you look across the landscape, it, um, it's very inconsistent, right? So every company is trying to recreate the wheel with the referral process and major problems, which we can talk about today, but you know, we're seeing a lot of tr manual tracking. We're seeing the payout on the, um, on the hire, which makes economic sense, but there's a lot of things that are involved in the referral process on the front end, like sourcing and uh, contacting your friends and colleagues and submitting that candidate. So, and then lastly, we have the, uh, the network, right? So how do you ask your network for referrals and what's the best way to incentivize your network? So that's a little bit about, you know, the, the, the reason, you know, I thought of Prefer Hired and just kind of background, we've been in business for about a year and a half already and just really excited to be here. So. So in a nutshell, can you give us an, like what Preferred Hire does? And then we can obviously lead on to all of the joys of getting employee referrals out of people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, Preferred Hired is a, uh, it's, a it, it's a referral marketplace, really, is the best way to put it. Um, it serves as both an internal and external uh, ERP, right? So uh, we're a very unique uh, model in the fact that we've, We've monetized the recruitment stage into three process, processes. We have the accepted, referred, applied, and a reward is paid in real time. If the candidate is moved to interview stage, a second reward is paid. And then ultimately a, a third reward is paid if the candidate is actually hired. And so we facilitate the payment. It's all done in real time. And so what this does is basically in a nutshell, it just increases engagement among the employees and allows you to capitalize on your network as well. So does that mean you're rewarding in cash only? Like, sorry, just in case I missed that then. Because I'm not sure cash would motivate me to give a referral. That sounds strange, I know. Strange, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it is cash, right? So um, we, the majority of employees and, and individuals that participate in a referral program do it um, to help a friend out, right? Obviously, to help a friend out, it's good karma, um, but incentives do help. Right. So we offer really two forms. We offer quick, real time cash incentives and the individuals can also donate the money. So if they're not interested in actually pocketing the money themselves in, um, you know, PayPal is what our payment mechanism is, they can actually donate. And right now uh, the standard donation is to the Wounded Warrior Project, which is a, a very good cause to support the troops. Wow. Very cool. I love the idea of rewarding people um, for actually just sending in candidates not they don't have to get hired i think i've heard of that a little bit before but i don't think many vendors or companies do that at all yeah what do companies you always think that? about that yeah 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 i think um it, it makes a lot of economic sense to 
pay on the hire, right? Um, obviously, that's the goal is to make the hire. And I think most of the time, companies also look at it like, you know, hey, we can make payments on submitting a qualified candidate, but that is a, a really big burden uh, for any company's payroll, right? Um, the accounting department probably thinks it's a nightmare. So we, we actually pull that away from the accounting department per se and actually pay the individuals in real time uh, ourselves. So it, it kind of alleviates, but that I think that's a big obstacle um, to doing stuff like that. But if you think about um, the referral process, the heavy lifting is actually done on the front end, right? I'm sure you know, everybody here has probably participated in some form or fashion in that process. Um, you know, when you're reaching out to your friends and colleagues and actually putting, you know, putting your stamp of approval on a candidate, submitting them to your boss, after the interview, it's really out of the referrer's hands. That's between the candidate and the hiring manager. So most referral processes unintentionally basically say to the referrer, you know, hey, it didn't work out. Thanks for nothing. And so, again, I guess the, the focus that we're trying to place and like everybody should place is like, what are the activities that are driving qualified candidates to the organization? Right? I love that idea, but how do you prevent someone from just throwing everyone they ever knew or loads of names in just to get that first bonus. Like I do see what you're saying. I'm just, that's like the fear of companies, right? I'm throwing my entire LinkedIn network in now. <laughs> Why not, right? It's all about the money. It's going to charity. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'd like to throw my 5,000 connections too. <laughs> right. So um, <laughs> what, what, what we do is uh, we, you can't really just, I, I like to use the, the, um, the phrase like throwing spaghetti strands against the wall to see if they stick. And I think that's really important because um, we, we don't want to create that. No one wants to create that type of environment. So, I mean, with our model and, uh, you know, the candidate actually has to apply to the job, right? So if I referred you to a position and said, you know, are you interested? Yeah, great. Your apply actually comes back to me as the referrer. And I, I make sure that, yes, I'm willing to put my stamp of approval on that person and submit them to the hiring manager. So the candidate actually has to apply to the job. And then we also have like a little little rating system that helps companies determine, yes, this is somebody who's good at referring candidates and or no, this is not someone that's good at referring candidates. And, and that process is automated as well. So, so the, the biggest complaint I hear is that I refer someone to you and they go into the process and then it's a black hole. Like there's no, and I always do that thing about, you know, if you're waiting for a train, if you know how long before the train arrives, you'll feel really relaxed. But like, are you helping with that side as well? Or is it more the getting the quality of the referrals up? Um, I'd say it's both. I mean, obviously we want to create a, you know, a system that is delivering uh, high quality candidates at a low cost, right? That's the goal. But um, I think the candidate experience is um, extremely important because uh, most, and I'm, I know I'm picking on the job board industry as a whole, but kind of the, um, you know, the downside to the candidate experience is what everybody is, knows as the black hole, right? You, you are referred to a job, you apply to a job and you hear nothing. And that's, that doesn't create good branding, um, for, you know, from an organization. And I know every job board out there is trying to tackle that issue. Um, what we've done is our, our, aside from our payment process being instant, um, the communication is also instant, right? So a candidate knows every stage of the process of where they are and they, they can do this on their phone or on their desktop, but we also, we notify them, but they can also just look at their device and, and see their dashboard. And it's, it's literally an updated dashboard of where they are in the process. They know who's referring them. So it's, it's very transparent, the communication. And we think that's really important aspect to this and you know, just want to place a heavy emphasis on the candidate experience. Is there any competition in your, or I forget the word I'm looking for, but like leaderboard, that kind of thing or not? Uh, in, in your, I'm, I'm assuming you're meaning internally. Um, it's, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it, it's on the roadmap for sure. Um, so uh, it, this really is a true marketplace. So meaning um, companies can set rewards 
for the referrals at these three stages. Uh, referrers, whether they're internal or external, can determine, you know, yes, that turns my head, I'd like to refer candidates. Um, but yes, we have on the roadmap to actually have a, like what, we, what we're gonna call like super referrers, mm -hmm. right? Where it's a, a you know, they're setting, hey, I'm an expert in this specific industry and I'm willing to help you network uh, individuals within that industry, but this is really what my time is worth. So that, that is actually on the roadmap. Ooh, and they would actually get paid more? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you, you, you <laughs> might say, look, I'm very well networked, um, but, you know, I, I really want to be uh, compensated fairly for my efforts because, it, you know, as we all know, sourcing is, it's difficult. It's not an easy job. And if you're going to devote time to this as an external referrer, if you're going to devote time to this, you, it, it should be worth your while. So absolutely. Can I just throw an apology out there? If Audra speaks in the middle of Michael speaking and I don't mute fast enough, we're getting the echo. So I'm so sorry. I'm trying the best I can. I'm feeling quite stressed. <laughs> Boys, I like the idea of like a bidding process though. You could say that, you know, mine are worth this much. It's interesting. Definitely. Yeah, and thank you for doing the mute. Um, just so everybody knows, I'm actually referred to as mute button Bachman. So I'm, I'm, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I'm sure uh, internally they're, they're cracking up about this already. But uh, thank you for muting me and unmuting me. <laughs> so I, I have a question. So obviously, you know, lots of companies, they come along and they get their new software or they get their latest scheme or whatever, and nobody gets bought into the process. Like going back a bit, sort of stepping into the beginning of the funnel. What, why is it? Why are we so resistant to, you know, refer people in, even if we love the company? Before you unmute, I want to say one thing about that. Um, so we have a similar situation. We have a we have a great referral program, but all the time employees are saying, "Do we have one?" And it's it's so hard to like so work on getting it out there. So we tell them an orientation, we try and send out emails, and, but that's totally a challenge. So I just want to throw that in as part of the question. Yeah, um, that's a great question and statement. And I, I think, you know, look, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're using our product or any, any other product you're, you know, yourself or you've created a referral pro uh, program. It's definitely not something you can just set and let it go. I mean, it, it, you have, you, you're going to get out of it what you put into it and that goes with anything. So, um, you know, I would just say that it's something that you have continuously have to work, uh, continuously have to measure right and adjust and uh, i think communication is probably the most important aspect to any referral uh, process so have one of your clients been particularly in, in innovative i can't say that on a friday afternoon <laughs> in how they've gone about getting referrals like getting people bought in okay they've done uh, slapped them around the head with a cold fish or something or <laughs> um, yeah i think um you know we, we so when we launched um uh, we would develop the program and, and the clients would buy in. And I think that clients that are really getting the most out of this product, as well as any other referral process are really getting the employees to buy in. So what I mean by that is, you know, they're, they're asking us, Hey, just, you know, can you go ahead and create a, create an account uh, for each one of my you know, 500 employees or so and offer them, training on how easy the process is, like why they would want to do that. So I think it's just getting everybody um, in, engaged and comfortable and talking about the benefits of bringing good candidates to the company. And uh, the company's rewards are really just a token of appreciation for the employees. That's fair. That makes sense. Did Jim have a question back up here, by the way, before we got onto slapping people no. with frozen fishes? <laughs> uh, he did say something interesting about whether we should c or consider the idea of referring someone maybe at the stages you mentioned, which is cool, but also if they say like a whole year, then you could give like maybe a really big bonus. It's something I hadn't heard. It's definitely interesting. I don't know if people stay at companies long enough these days though. Yeah, um, actually we get that question a lot. I think it's a great one. and. Um, the thing I, I love about working for like a young company like ourselves is that we can, you know, we can change and innovate. So we try to listen to our customers like any other um, company out there, but I, we have heard that. And I think that's a great idea. Like um, we've been uh, asked like, Hey, we, you know, we love the model and the stages. 
could we also put in like a, a, a retention bonus at the end um, of that? So if the person does last six months, 12 months, you know, can there be an incentive? And I, I think that's great. Uh, I love, I love talking about uh, your meeting with clients, I should say, and that are trying to think outside of the box with, with specific uh, ideas. So who's getting the retention bonus? Is that the original referrer or the employee that stays? Because I've got this vision of them all staying to 12 months of one day and resigning. <laughs> um it, it's it actually you know I, i'm not opposed to having it both you know i think that's a great idea i mean that, that you know that um you know probably two different programs there but um you know i think if you could incentivize uh the referrer as well you know that that person could be the mentor or a listening ear or, or guidance and support throughout the process but yeah absolutely i think it's a great idea um, what do you think about companies that do uh, there's one at least that does like vacations or or different things instead of money i thought it, it's kind of interesting very and i hope no one internally at prefer hired just heard that <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's i think it's a great idea i, I in fact i was on a, a chat yesterday and and uh one individual said that they have like a um they have a standard referral process where they they make they give a payment <laughs> Uh, when the person's hired, um, but then their name is put into a hat and mm -hmm. at six months, they pull one name out of the hat and they won like a, a nice vacation. I, I think that's an awesome idea. I think, you know, again, anything you can do to think outside of the box, I think is great. And, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's why we're having the conversation today. We know referred candidates are, are higher quality and, and better fit for the organization. So it, it makes economic sense all, all around. Mm. It's just, I guess the reason we keep coming up with that is particularly in the tech space, I've seen companies even offer 10,000 pounds for a referral and people not refer. Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about the money because it could be, you know, I don't want to bring my friends into this company because it's a crap company or whatever. <laughs> I mean, have you had, actually, there's a question off the record because this isn't a show going out publicly. Have you had to kind of get a client to deal with Glassdoor reviews or Indeed reviews or like take it a step back and go, actually, you need to sort your crap out first? Obviously, you wouldn't call it that in the US because you never swear it over there ever. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, yeah. Um, no, absolutely, yeah. So we've had, um, we've had firms already where we're making outreaches and we've had to share uh, back with the client some of the responses because Part of our responsibility, I should say, is to uh, is to get that engagement right. So, using a product like ours, uh, we have to get the engagement. It's our job to get the engagement. So, um, we are providing feedback, and and sometimes it hasn't been the greatest feedback. So, I, I think I think things like last door reviews and other types of reviews are are really important metrics to look at when evaluating your referral uh, program. Yeah, that's a good point because I could see if you oh, if you had <laughs> if you had an engagement problem already, then it, this would definitely be a challenge for sure. Oh, 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 Mr. Cox, he's calling bullshit. We love him. Obviously, Ooh. he didn't write bullshit because he's American. He wrote BS because nobody knows what that means. Referred candidates are always a higher quality calling BS. Is that really just for certain departments like jo uh, or jobs, IT sales? I get lots of referrals that are quite cringeworthy. Ooh. Yeah, um, great statement. Uh, I, I think you have to you have to have a mechanism in place to determine uh, the quality of referred candidates from the individual. And and you know, I every company I meet with, they they tell me that there's it's typically some of the people that are participating the most that are kind of those spaghetti strand mm -hmm. uh, referrers. Um, and so I think there there has to be some kind of metric in place to determine like who, who you can trust and who you probably shouldn't trust. Um, but I think as long as you're tackling that, uh, you know, I, I think there's good um, there's good intent, right? So that's that's kind of a a, bad, a a good problem to have. Yeah, I can imagine the conversation. Sorry, you're a shit referrer. Stop doing it, please, please stop, stop. I can't. How do you have that conversation? I wouldn't even know where to start having that conversation. Stop throwing spaghetti. Oh, we've got questions. Do you want to read Jim's okay. up or is it a statement? Uh, Jim says, if a company really wanted to brag about their culture, they would poll their employees monthly 
and post the results on their careers page in a real time. Wow, I love it. I've seen that. Someone's doing that. I can't think who. I have seen that. I love the idea of calling them and engaging surveys like all the time. Small, short ones, real time, for sure. Not enough companies do that. A bit like when you go through customs and there's the little... Yes, yes. In between. Yeah. Like every week or something crazy. And then in between departments, you sort out which departments are changing. and companies that do that. That would be quite cool. Uh, yes, that would be very, very bold, Bridget. 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 I can't say bold and Bridget in one sentence. Oh my goodness. It must be Friday. <laughs> Companies are getting bolder, though. I can see that happening for sure. Yeah, definitely. I should unmute Mike so he can speak. Just a thought. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I don't really um, like what, um, what specific question do you have for me? Ooh, let's see. Ooh, let's see. Oh, let's talk about candidate quality a bit more. I feel like, there we go. Just, yeah, I mean, just candidate quality. How do you encourage employees to really invest time to getting really good referrals versus the spaghetti thing that I think that I have? Yeah, I think if you can, um, you know, set the bar right to the type of candidate that you're looking for, right? So set set the bar and. Uh, have have the incentives or the rewards or whatever you're doing, the, the, you know, the program, focus on that quality piece, right? So if there's specific qualifications that are on the job description, if a candidate that is referred meets, you know, all five of those criteria, then maybe that's part of the incentive that you're offering uh, to that referral. So I think that, you know, again, I, Placing the emphasis on the front end, the quality piece, I think the rest will kind of follow. I also see that my clients have more success when they will work out. Like it probably kind of defeats the purpose a bit about what you're talking about, but if they can actually find the connection. So using some of the brilliant Chrome extensions to go, oh, well, you know, I can find Michael Cox over here and he knows Michael Buffkman. So I will ask Michael to go put the referral in like taking some of the leg work out. Have you had clients be that proactive to cool. try and add some more in or? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of, um, to your, exactly to your point, that Chrome extension, there's a lot of technology out there to assist in, in that process. So ab- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think one thing that's helpful to um, any organization, uh, in, including like us, I mean, it, it, you know, if you can identify individuals within someone's network, that's, a, you know, Hey, have you contacted these five people that are right within your first degree connection? They'd be a perfect fit for this company. So yeah, that's a great, uh, you know, great, great point. Yeah. I think that's when you can take it across into social as well. Now, do they still get the payout though? If you as a recruiter found them, but they are their connection, I guess so. I think if they still do the work, they know. Well, they don't. Yeah. They didn't have to if you found them and just said, "Can you?" Int-? Well, they introduced you, so there you go. Yeah, but I so might. Have, have I might approach Michael Buckman Cold and met, drop Michael Cox's name in, and he might go, "Nah," because he doesn't know me. I think with the noise out there with recruiters, you know, yep. the the job board noise or the LinkedIn spam noise. Oh, sorry, did I say that again? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's still warm confidence. Yeah. No, the introduction is the effort, so we can say it off. Like um, you should do too early. <laughs> Actually, oh, here we go. So we've got a question from Bridget. Why do so many companies not realize that 14 to 15 steps to give your referral is a horrible experience? I've oh my God. Who has that <gasps> many steps? That's have you crazy. had that situation, Michael? Have you had to deal with it? And I'm very sorry. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> I don't have an accent. You have an accent. I'm fully understandable. <laughs> okay. No, why do so many companies not realize that 14 to 15 steps to give your referral is a horrible experience as well? So have you come up against that with clients who, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that sounds like a a candidate nightmare also, right? So Mm -hmm. aside from the referral process, I mean, that's, you that, that sounds extensive. I mean, I would say the number one reason for lack of engagement is because of something like that. If they're track, if they have to do something that manual to submit a referral, uh, I can't imagine what the candidate experience is like as well. So it sounds like that, you know, Bridget, uh, that client that you mentioned 
probably has some work to do from both the candidate apply as well as you know what it takes for a employee to submit a referred mm -hmm. candidate absolutely very extensive but yeah we've I haven't heard of 14, but I've, I've seen pretty extensive um, referral process. Mm. Do you see companies that have a person internally that's either part-time or full-time devoted to just referrals? Or do you see kind of the recruiters, I think more commonly, they all have a piece of it, where if they see it, they have to you know split up, tackle. Yeah, great question. I think um, I've seen it. I've seen it all uh, from that perspective, meaning um, I have uh, talked to companies that and, and, and every the referral process should be a part of any company's recruitment strategy, first and foremost. Right. Mm -hmm. But with that, yes, I have seen individuals responsible only for referrals in a company. And I'm talking to one organization that actually has a team of six people that are solely responsible for referrals within the company. An entire team, yeah, just you know, massive undertaking. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mute. I didn't mute. I was answering yeah. this question. It's all too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here, just being like chillaxed on a Friday. But no, you, you're making me all stressed this week. <laughs> Muting and answering questions. The team of people is really interesting. But I'm guessing, and I know you're stuck on mute, but that that must be a big, big company because that's that's a big investment of six people. Oh, yeah, that particular firm is an international firm, right? And uh, they're, that's a team within uh, the U.S. here. Um, but, yeah, it's an international company, an enormous size. Wow, that's quite amazing. But I guess they're getting the results, no? Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. I mean, that's, I don't know, they are better quality of hire, apparently, you know? Yeah. Actually, I mean, yeah. if you could track the cost, you know, back to, you know, savings and, paying those people. I think it makes sense. But most companies, I don't think that aren't that big, certainly can't afford that. But maybe one person or maybe even part time, maybe they could do part time referrals and part time. Yeah, their HR things. I guess so. What is Blake writing down here? Way different okay. ways. Oh, yeah. Oh, APAC just... versus USA, way different markets. Mm, that's Aren't interesting. They? Why do you think they're different markets? What's the best way to start implementing your referral program? We've discussed that, cold, wet fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's one for you. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, throws on the budget. budget. I'd love to see, yeah, love to see what you think. The, the, the best way to start is, is, that, is planning, right? So um, you've got to have a plan, you've got to have a benchmark, you've got to have goals. And... Um, and a budget, right? Because it, it is going to cost something to put together a plan so, or a, a program. But I think the best thing you can do is just plan the best you can, set, set those benchmarks and goals and um, measure, right? So uh, probably measure on a first weekly basis, a monthly basis, but I, I don't think you can over plan and I don't think you can measure too much. And as long as you uh, remain uh, flexible, you can pivot very quickly. So does your software measure then as well? So that allows them to see that or do they? Yeah, I assume it does. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, our, our platform absolutely measures success, right? So it's, yeah. it's actually what we call a pay for success model. Um, but yeah, it, we help our clients absolutely measure and, and plan as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I've got a question. What is an, like an ideal rate rate how many percent i know it varies of course per company but what's like a good goal for a company to say maybe they're only at like 10 or 20 percent what should they hope to be at and um i'm assuming you mean from a, an engagement perspective is that accurate but i'm talking about percent okay. of referrals like out of all their candidates you know candidates or, or, or hires what percent come from referrals well, um, right now it's, it's, let's just say it's about 40%, right? 37, 40%, depending on what you know, metric you're looking at, but let's, let's just call it like, you know, in that round number. Um, I, I think every company is going to have a different goal. I mean, my personal opinion <laughs> is that it should be a hundred percent, right? Because again, we are, we're all networked and we're all connected. Um, and, um, something interesting is that, you know, referrals, are the number one source of hire, right? Across, across the board. Yet, um, and staffing is our friends, um, but just kind of this, 
uh, spells it out um, between staffing and job boards globally. It's a, you know, it's over a $500 billion industry. And so if you think of it from that perspective, moving the needle a little bit in your own referral program probably saves your company a tremendous amount of money. Um, and also at the same time delivers you really good candidates. It's, it's like a no brainer, isn't it? But yeah. um, I think Jim has a very good point here. <laughs> As well. yeah, I love it. T-shirts, make T-shirts that say John Doe. Can we actually use the person's name or do we have to use John Doe? Uh, has been here for two years. Take photos of your employees wearing the T-shirt and post all over social media. Every time there is a work anniversary, do this for laughs and retention. That's a freaking brilliant idea. I love that. Um, Bridget's got another question. This is aimed at you, Audrey. You're under the spotlight. Can we, can we skip Even it? Your experience with employer too bad you have to answer it you're 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 on the spotlight honey running um given your experience with employer branding have you how have you seen erp successfully or negatively affect their eb there's so many I, layers I, in that question i can't even work out what she's saying <laughs> yeah I, you, you guys like, have, I have three letter abbreviations the one thing that comes to mind though is i think if you're having layoffs then i think you could definitely have some challenges when it comes to if you're pushing out asking for referrals it could annoy people and then they could go to Glassdoor and say not, you know, things that they don't like about the company. So I think that when you have a bad culture, I mean, we already talked about that part is when yeah. it's going to be tricky to really be asking and pushing for these referrals. But I guess but that's I where you have to have the sense to go do it right. One to one. Mm -hmm. I think that's where sometimes. Yeah, I'm curious, actually, exactly what you're saying. I'm curious how you get it out. I mean, I know your system probably does it, but like, is it email good or one to one, like going person to person asking for a referral or, how do you just get the word out that there even is a referral program? What's the best way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've muted him. <laughs> uh, it's gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna vary from company to company, right? So you have to know your company's form of communication, right? So in our company, as an example, we really love Slack, and I'm sure there's a lot of people on this call that. Also use Slack. Oh no, you're not a fan. <laughs> uh, we really like Slack. So that would be the best way for us to communicate to, internally, right? To uh, spread the word. But I think, um, I think it, as it goes from referrer to candidate, again, that referrer has to know the audience, right? So it's, it's going to be email, text, or social. And I think a lot has to do on the type of position as well. Like, you know, some, um, you know, and more entry level types of positions. Maybe you can get that mass broadcast out on a social, maybe the higher level types of positions. Those are going to be the more, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one email text. maybe even follow up with a phone call, that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it all comes back to the company's communication. I'm going to wade in on that because Blake's actually asked me a question that <laughs> reflects really well on what you just said. Um, Katrina, what's your sourcing secret for employee referrals? So, you, yeah, you're right because it all depends on the level of the role and how hard it is to find and, and, and where a recruiter is dedicating their time. So it's great when a company's got six people just focused on employee referrals, great for them. And then there's the real world <laughs> when there's one very overworked recruiter who's pulling their hair out. Um, but if you've got those roles that are really difficult, I think it really comes down to, so at least in recruitment, which is slightly easier than HR, you could potentially be Facebook friends with a lot of your staff and therefore some of the Chrome extensions will really show, show the Facebook friends network. Um, or of course it's going into your alumni and places like that to see but again, it comes down to using the tools to see the hook and then walking physically over to them and asking them. So it's sort of, but you won't want to do that if you need a hundred entry level roles. So you're right. Yeah. There's um, yeah. another, oh, sorry. I was going to ask that diversity thing. Yeah, oh. that's it. I think that's a great question that we haven't you brought do it, up yet. You do it, you do it. Yeah. So Blake <laughs> is saying, um, people say diversity isn't good for referrals, but he says he begs to differ. How do you convince those, those that employ referrals uh, is good for diversity. So yeah, good or bad, or how does that work? Yeah, great question. That's one I'm asked a lot, right? And um, I'm 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 with Blake. I think a good referral program encourages diversity, and uh, let's you know, birds of a feather flock together, right? So if you're trying to make that outreach and trying to 
change the landscape of your organization, I think a, a good referral program is, is an excellent way to do that. Um, also, one kind of overlooked metric to uh, diversity, especially as it pertains to um, aspects of the gig economy, um, and I would put, you know, our organization like within that um, in that uh, sphere, uh, we we have a lot of uh, diverse individuals that are participating in the referral program. So, you know, I think it's really interesting to look at, you know, if you have a, an ERP that's both internal and external, how can you focus on um, you know, your own organization and diversifying your organization? And then what does that organization bring to the whole sphere uh, in, in that category from uh, the participation of the referral process and, and what types of individuals are participating in the program? But it's, it's a very interesting conversation for sure. Mm -hmm. they're, cool. they're, they're quiet in the peanut gallery today, no? Well, they're I making fun of each other, but not asking questions. Which I know, is fair enough. I was waiting for like loads and loads of questions. Yeah. Um, uh, I have one. This is interesting. What do you think of the platforms that automate the job posts and the, with the idea that if it's just going off on Twitter and LinkedIn, then people are going to see it and it's just good to get it out there and maybe it's not the right job, but it's good to get out there? Or do you think it's a bit spammy? Or I think you could see it either way. I think you can see it other, any other way or every way, but um, I think it's also very noticeable, right? At least in my network, um, it, when I see those types of jobs from the, the shelf purchased ATS, and it's, look, it's a great function to have, or it's better than nothing, right? But you can you can almost tell that there's an automated uh, you know approach, uh, especially for maybe an executive of the organization who isn't very active on social media, and yet <laughs> every day you know you see the same job popping up, I, I think it, it does, um, overall it's better than nothing, but I do think it, it does create like an image that there isn't much care or thought uh, placed behind the process. Yeah, you really need to pick the ad, because you need to know your own network, right? So to pull out one and choose to send it on. Yeah, there are some, they have like tools, you can say just these group of jobs or this location, and that's still, again, a little bit better. But I think, yeah, well, the whole thing makes me work. cringe. You know my yeah. thoughts about. But you can see the other side of things is, hey, it, it's getting it out there, and maybe you, you, this person doesn't know that job, but now they know you're hiring. Like, so there is two sides to it for sure. It's complicated, I think. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to press that little mute button right there. Uh, <laughs> so I do have a little fun story about that. So just. Everybody out there, please make sure if you do have those automated, um, you know, referral requests, make sure if an employee leaves the organization that you've turned mm -hmm. off that mechanism. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen uh, people within my network that have actually, uh, you know, they've been sharing jobs from that company, but they've moved on to the next one, and the person hasn't turned off that mechanism within their ATS. So just, just something to think about. <laughs> That's funny. So was there a backlash on that? Did they add notes like going, don't work here, it's crap or anything like that? I see, I just didn't swear for the Americans on the call. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, no, I, they, they didn't write anything um, just, you know, for obvious good taste reasons, but um, they definitely had to call the company and say, please take me off of your distribution. I've moved on to uh, the next opportunity. <laughs> Wow, God, that's scary. What's Jim doing down here? He's got an interesting idea. Oh, do you want to read it? Okay, I'll go, I'll read it. I'll do it in my Jim Strand voice. Woo! Uh -oh. Okay, joking. Um, Google famously gives their employees twenty percent of their work week to do extra projects. Uh, why not give employees a percentage of time to be involved in meetups or conferences for the purpose of meeting people they can refer? Yeah, and learn new stuff. Um, Zalando do that really well as well. When Chris Roll was on the other week. Um, can I get that mute button for the teenager in my life? I don't think that was related to what he just said. <laughs> um, have you have you seen any clients try and do that rather than doing ref actual monetary, like actually perhaps shifting time around, doing more learning or? Um, I I haven't I haven't heard of that, um, but that's a great idea. Um, I, I you know, most of the companies I'm talking to, uh, I would say they most of them have the standard. You know, we pay out at 90 days or six months. Um, there, it's very few candidate or companies are actually thinking outside of the box uh, often. But I, I love that idea. But I, I have not uh, heard of that. 
So what do you do when you want them to like pay up front like we were talking about? I mean, how do you convince them that that is a really good idea when they just want to do 90 days or 180 or whatever? Point. Uh, big question, and I'm asked that every day. <laughs> and so if you, um, I mean, again, coming back to the conversation of the heavy lifting component, and, you know, I, I really kind of just, and everybody has to kind of think of this, uh, you know, if, if you're, and I let them know at the beginning of my pitch, like, listen, when you're looking at our model, please just, you know, put on a different thinking cap, right? Just have open eyes, open ears, just listen. Um, because I do think that if you're trying to move the needle on your own referral process and uh, a program and what you're doing today, you need to move the needle north and then you have to be receptive to new ideas. So, you know, basically ask them, how's that working for you, your current model? Point. Well, exactly right. It's not working, mm -hmm. but we don't want to change anything. Yeah, why are you here? Because you want my opinion. I'm going to give it to you. This yeah. is smart. Oh, you don't like my opinion. Oh, this is familiar. I've had this conversation about my stuff. Um, I, yeah. I love um, Bridget's written here. So when um, Jim's talked about Google, it's a good point, Jim. Google is also way ahead of the curve. Of course, they push boundaries and aren't stuck in 1995 with their ERA programs. That's brilliant. So Yeah, I think one major problem with the whole waiting three months is that you could give a really amazing, fantastic referral and they just lose out because there was one other person, you know, that was better, just totally bad luck. And then you don't get any kind of reward and that's tough. But I'm curious more about this rating system you said. Do you have like an internal rating system? What's the, how does that work? Yeah, um, great question. So the rating system, it's, it, the hiring manager does not rate the referrer, right? What rates the referrer is the candidate success through the pipeline. So in a nutshell, does that referrer submit candidates that are of good quality? Does that candidate move to the interview stage? Does that candidate get hired? And all of those positive outcomes affect the, the rating system. And I mean, this is a huge analogy, <laughs> but um, just think of it like, you know, when you call a, a Lyft driver, right? You, you know the rating of that individual. Can we just say, or Uber, just, you know, we don't want to discriminate here. <laughs> <laughs> or Uber. <laughs> so uh, just think about the, the, the rating system of that driver approaching you and you know how they perform as a driver. And then they, they also know how you are as a passenger, right? And we have the same model. Does, you know, does the hiring manager move on referred candidates? Is it, again, is it worth my time at referring someone? Because if they're not going to move on a candidate, then I'm certainly not going to refer anyone to the uh, hiring manager. Oh, sorry, I muted you early. Oh my God, that brings up the, I know, I just muted you again. <laughs> Next time we know, everyone has to have a headset. Uh, that brings up the whole other issue, isn't it? So if you have a little friction with a hiring manager, even though you're a great referrer, they don't like you personally. Mm. I don't like Audra, so she sends me a referral. I'm just going to bin it. Like, wow, I guess it's going to track that and show that though, right? So you can go back and tackle it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It it not only rates the referrer, but yeah, it could, it could create dialogue like, hey, you're missing the boat. And um, we also have like what I like to call the nuclear option. <laughs> and that is, is just removing someone from the process altogether. So if they're not um, listening or if they're just, again, throwing spaghetti strands against the wall, to really save time, just remove that person from the process. They can't share your jobs. They can't see your jobs. And uh, they've just been removed. There are so many hiring managers that the recruiters over here are wanting to remove in the process about now. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Cox <laughs> talked about that last week, didn't he? <laughs> so we can just mm -hmm. take them out of the referral process. I'm so. curious, do the employees, no, yeah, do the employees see what their review is or is it just the recruiters? No, it's, um, it's a very transparent process. So um, every, let's call it a profile on, on platform, everybody knows exactly what their metrics are, if they're good or bad. And so, um, you know, it's not, it's not really a difficult process. In fact, it's a very easy process, but we do let individuals know that are on the, um, the platform that yes, they can submit candidates and make fast cash um but you're going to be rated so make sure that you're you know doing your 
due diligence and submitting only candidates that are meeting the qualifications. So I get really offended when I hear my Uber rating. <laughs> it's not five, it's 4.7. I didn't I had know people a, had one. It's just, yeah, I thought yeah. it was just the drivers that had yeah, one. No, no, you can ask what your rating is. And the only reason I have that is I had somebody get lost and I went, you're heading north, not south. I live south. Mm. And he went, nee, 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 and I'm sure he gave me one. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, there was another question that I saw. Oh, what about feedback to the referrers? I think we've kind of covered that, but not overly. That's from Jenny Ella. The, the, well, the, the that, ratings do that a bit, for sure, I, if you've got a I, one rating. <laughs> Yeah, but are they also getting feedback from the hiring manager, like what the hiring manager says about the referral? Do they see it as blatantly as that? Um, great question, and um, it's one we're tackling, right? So yeah, they can they know right away if their candidate has accepted, etc., and they they absolutely know their rating system. Um, but what one thing again we're putting on the roadmap and it's in development is better communication for that process. Like, hey, you missed. You missed by this much and you know the next candidate we want to see that type of process but again just to emphasize it is open communication um, but we we want uh, to make sure that the communication is done through the, the platform just for ease of use if that makes sense so you do have a leaderboard really in a sense because people can see in a competitive component which is cool i think that could work for people so does it plug into all the other systems as well? Because that'll be the next thing. They're like, oh God, not another system. I don't want another system, can't cope. Excellent question. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we get that question all the time. And um, I, you know, I think with any product uh, in the space, just what, what we really try to convey is like, let's just do a crawl, walk and run process, right? So if you like the product, absolutely, it can integrate and talk to your system. Uh, but try it, you know, try it. And that goes for not just pre for hired, but that goes for any type of technology that you're uh, looking at or trying to review. So question, if you had just like one, you are only allowed one way, like one suggestion to recruiters or one top tip or one thing that really, really bugs you about this entire thing, like what would it be? Your number one thing, like to Monday morning, I want that changed. What would it be about employer referrals? Um, I would say, <laughs> I would say one thing that like, if I could change uh, would just be uh, stay, like, stay tuned, right? Um, it's even for the best of companies, it's, it's work to get engagement. It really is. Even for the best you know, cultures, the best payouts, um, just stay tuned. It's, you know, it, it's, it's an easy process and, uh, you know, it, there's, there's a lot of uh, satisfaction at being kind of like a brand ambassador to your company and it's doing the company the right thing and hey you can make some side cash too so i, I would just say just stay tuned would be the you know the number one thing i i kind of like bridget's response though <laughs> yes <laughs> to, i like that too to not be in 1995. <laughs> I think Bridget and I need to have an off the record conversation about what companies you're talking to because I just find this quite funny. Not that we'd ever few. have that. That would be naughty, wouldn't it? Any ATS. <laughs> so ERP success equals sourcing success when done right. Absolutely. It's gold. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Jim, why not pay 25 cents for each day a new hire stays to be cashed out in two years if they leave before that? No money. Only 25p, you cheapie. <laughs> <laughs> Two years. I know, he's so funny. Have you uh -huh. met the Gen X? Like, we don't stay two years. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I um, on that note, I, I have uh, spoken to companies that have that type of residual payout. So a lot of, um, a lot of healthcare staffing firms, believe it or not, are, uh, have referral processes like that. So for every, you know, hour that nurse works, you're receiving some form of compensation. Again, I, you know, hats off to that company, because I think that any anytime you're doing something different, I think that that's a good thing. But uh, isn't that what your wage is? You're paid to stay, not paid an extra bit to stay? I, okay, I don't, I'm, I think I'm missing that one. <laughs> Well, I think um, if, I, if I understood the question or comment correctly, I think it's uh, 
if you referred someone to the organization for every hour that they're working or every day that they're working, your referral oh compensation God. is then that, right? So it, it kind of, um, it takes care of a little bit of that uh, for, uh, earlier question that we were discussing, and that's kind of like the retention bonus. Uh, mm -hmm. So the longer you can keep that you know, nurse working on an hourly basis at that facility, the more money you're going to make in your pocket. Uh, Jeez, though, that really that was down to just money, and it's a bit depressing when that whole idea is like we have yeah. an awesome company, we want our, we yeah. want awesome people to work here. I mean, it's, that's a tough balance between the yeah. money and. That was my mistake as well. I was thinking the person that's working was getting the extra money, but you mean the referrer is getting the extra money. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean you're right, Orja. It should be about the culture, and, but I think guess in healthcare though, God. Again, short mm -hmm. supply, isn't it? Short supply of nurses and all that sort of stuff. So, so. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I would say yes. Um, it, 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 it's most people uh, refer because it's the right thing to do, right? Um, in fact, you know, I think it's 40% of people that refer just want to help their friend out. That's awesome. But if you can also educate your, your employees of what really is taking place, right? So this is a great way for us to find qualified candidates just like you. We're going to pay you because if you don't do this, we have to spend, you know, money to attract candidates. And it comes back to my comment of five hundred and ten billion dollars globally to find good people. So, you know, we want you to make money. We want you to uh, get compensation because if you don't get compensation, we're going to have to spend a lot on the job boards and staffing. And again, for all my job board and staffing friends out there, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something to think about. I think that goes back to Jim's comment as well about like the praise, the social praise. So if you've got some, you know, like um, CA Technologies have Life at CA, we are, we are Cisco, you know, all of those Dell ones, we love Dell. So that the more that they show that recognition for a referral outside as well as internally, um, and make it really personal. I think it would fly as well. So, um, Danielle has got a question here. What about companies that split the reward with the referrer and the candidate? What is the benefit to that? It's different. Yeah. 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 There's, um, there's a couple models out there like that, um, where they actually do, right. There's some platforms out there that they'll actually split the, the reward. And I, I, again, I think that's to, um, obviously to encourage, uh, someone to be more attracted to that opportunity. Uh, but I think a lot of those platforms are actually uh, designed like that so that hiring managers don't um, bypass the process, meaning go around the, um, the, the platform itself. Like a lot of a crowdsourcing mechanisms might have that. So, uh, you know, I think it's, I think there's some uh, like maybe a little hidden agenda in there, but I don't, again, I don't think it's any, uh, you know, Think outside of the box. It's no different than paying a, a, a sign-on bonus, right? Which mm. we a lot of companies do that. We'll pay a sign-on bonus. So it's, again, I just think it's anything you can do outside of the box and, and measure. So if that, if that process is working for you, awesome. If it's not, then you, need, you need to make an adjustment. It sounds like there's a lot of um, head adjustment that need to be made, getting people mm. to think differently. <laughs> Are there any final questions? We're nearly out of time. My God, it's gone so fast. I got one last quick one. Um, do you see any companies that are so good at it that the employees are actually putting the word around about the referral program? And like, or is it more just the routine recruitment team pushing it out, saying do this, and they're doing it? Like, it would be awesome, right, if the employers were actually helping to share about it. Yeah, I mean, even, even with that company that that has like six people devoted to just referrals. I mean, I, you know, I'll, I'll play, yes, they're doing a great job. And a lot of companies have an awesome program in place and say, hey, we're fine with referrals. Our model is working great. Um, but yet just, you know, look at, look at their recruitment strategy and dissect that a little bit. Even this company with six people devoted to referrals. Um, and I won't tell you the company's team, but they spend millions of dollars on job boards. And so I would argue, you know, I think we could raise the needle up a little bit, not, not necessarily us, but they can raise the needle up a little bit and improve the quality of their candidates and maybe decrease their dependency on um, the job boards. Mm. There's a really curly question here from Ian. Did you see it? 
I'm not yeah, sure I'm not if sure I understand, understand it. it. But is it only recruiters? I think he means internal who can be referrers. Well, it's staff, employee even referrals. I'm a hirer, so I guess he's meaning outside. And if I'm on board, oh, no, if I'm on boarding in the US. No, actually, I don't get your question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I, I refer the candidates I decline? Oh, you mean decline from another company and refer them into your company? No, not sure. But then you'd just be an, an agency and you'd get a percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we need more. Sure. Why is there a whole drink conversation going on down here? <laughs> I blame. No, yeah. Mm. You've got a quick minute, Ian. I'm not sure I'm getting your question. But I mean, can oh sorry, I've still got you muted, haven't I? Uh, loving the mute thing. <laughs> um, can outside people refer? It's probably just an easier way to answer. Yeah, maybe that's what it means. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um our 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 model uh, specifically is it encourages that. So it it not only helps a company uh, get better engagement from their employees, but then opens up the ability to say, you know, hey, to my network, who do you know? Uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, again, we can all ask our network for support, but if you did want to offer compensation to your network or incentivize them to send referrals, there's a lot that needs to be thought about, right? So how do you pay that person? You know, do you mail them a gift card? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you put them on your payroll, tax implications. So um, using a platform like ours and, and others, um, we help streamline the, the payment process and just enable you to open it up externally. But long-winded answer to yes. <laughs> I have to say, Bridget has a great idea. Next time we do this, she wants to do it with wine. Considering okay. the time, it's interesting. Here, UK, sure, five to four, not a problem. Got to bring it on. So we are pretty well out of time, aren't we? That went quite fast. So thank you, thank you. I know you're still muted, but thank you so much for being our guest. Um, next week, we have the gorgeous Jennifer Newbell, who is not talking about employer referrals, which is shocking because everyone always wants to talk to her about them. Mm. Um, we're going to talk about anything else but. <laughs> Sorry, that would be quite exciting as well. So um, thank you again. Have you got any final thoughts, anything we missed, anything you wanted to say before I forget to unmute you? Or how can people reach you? Yeah. Um, so if you want to reach out to me, um, I'm Mike at prefired.com or look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, love to connect with everybody and, and chat. Love the topic. But just want to thank you both uh, for having me on the show today. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you so much for all of your knowledge yeah, as well. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you, everybody. We shall see you next week with headsets. So there's no echoing because that was stressful. <laughs> Yeah, thanks everyone on the side. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Michael. Bye.